Hello, it's Jennifer Harding Marlin. Today's video is going to compare and contrast living in St. Bart's compared to living in St. Martin. So I've been fortunate to live in both the French and Dutch side of St. Martin, as well as spend quite a significant amount of time in St. Bart's. And so we have a lot of people that are interested in potentially visiting and are relocating to these countries. So I thought I would do a video to talk a little bit more about my personal experiences and recommendations. So the population of St. Bart's is around 10,000 and St. Martin is over 70,000. Both have a growing population with more people wanting to relocate. It's important to note that if you relocate to St. Bart's in order to have tax-free status, you would have to spend at least five years in St. Bart's potentially. And then for St. Martin, if you decide to relocate, if you're someone that's retired and you wish to relocate to St. Martin, note that the St. Martin also has taxes depending on how you earn your income. And uh, so yeah, so that's a little bit about the population. Now about the cost of living, St. Martin is a lot more affordable to live when compared to St. Bart's. St. Bart's, the joke is if you buy something in St. Martin and you bring it to St. Bart's and you add a zero, you can sell it. So the cost of living is more expensive in St. Bart's. Rentals are much more expensive and real estate is more expensive. If you buy something in St. Martin, the cost, let's say is approximately 2 million in St. Martin. If you were to buy the same property in St. Bart's, you'd be looking at eight to 10 million. So St. Bart's is much more of a luxury, caters to much more luxury, wealthy individuals. If you're a wealthy entrepreneur um, or famous person, a lot of famous people and wealthy people have properties in St. Bart's. They like the privacy and the seclusion and the luxury of St. Bart's. If you're looking to buy brand names and luxury goods, St. Bart's is a place to go in Guastavia. They have a really lot of cute boutiques and places where you can buy luxury goods versus St. Martin caters more to, I guess you could say like regular people with more of a wide variety of options available for stores for, for purchase. And then both have really, really nice beaches. Um, St. Bart's, there's Governor, there's Colombier, which is one of my favorite beaches, uh, Saline, uh, St. Jean, Shell Beach. Then in um, in St. Martin, on the French and Dutch side, there's lots and lots of beaches, even more beaches than they have in St. Bart's. I could start naming them, um, like Orient Bay, uh, Character, like you could just go on and on and on and name all the beaches. So both have a lot of activities. You can do, you know, swimming, sailing, diving, kayaking. Uh, you could go around on jet skis, rent a boat. You could potentially go fishing. Um, they have jiu-jitsu, they have tennis, they have basketball, they have soccer. So there's a lot of different activities that you can get involved in. Fitness and, and you know, if you have kids, there's lots of activities for kids on both the islands. One of the things that I love is the food is so, so good. When you're on a French island, you can't go wrong with French food. They have a really, really great food. In St. Martin, my favorite place on the Dutch side is Mouve Fou. So I never can go to St. Martin without visiting Moulay Fou. For some reason, I just really love eating there. I uh, love the food, although it's a little bit more off the beaten path. And so that's a little bit about cost of living, real estate, um, activities that are available on the island. Now, so more about like the nightlife. So nightlife in St. Martin trumps the nightlife in St. Bart's. Like St. Bart's is really fun. But if you're a single person or if you're with a group of friends and you just want to go out and meet people and have the really best time, there's a lot more bars that are open in St. Martin, a lot more activities going on. There's music festivals all the time and like people playing electronic music or different types of music at different beaches. Every single weekend, there's a beach party. Um, some people take their boats from St. Bart's to St. Martin to party on the weekend um, and sometimes vice versa, depending. And there's, if you're looking for marine services, there's a lot more marine services in St. Martin. So they have a pond where all the boats, a lot of the boats are docked and or uh, anchored. And then if you need marine services, they have marine services um, and stuff that you can buy for your boat versus in St. Bart's, they don't have a dock for cruise ships. They don't have a dock necessarily. So a lot of big boats are anchored just outside of Gustavia most often so you know if you want to see like the the owners of Walmart their boat will be there and like a lot of people that have you know Steve Jobs's boat maybe um somewhere in St. Martin and or St. Bart's and all these like very very luxury 
luxury boats. They both have yacht regattas every year um, and sailing regattas. So those are really fun to attend. Like if you wanted to coordinate and see like these really boats and coordinate your visit to the time that they have like these festivals, it's really, really fun. And both islands are really great, like between the French and the Dutch side. So when I lived on St. Martin, I lived in Pelican Key and I really liked living in Pelican Key near the, wa Key near the water. It was really, really safe in my, in my view and qu relatively quiet. And then it was a walking distance from the grocery store and walking distance from nice restaurants and bars and the beach and other activities. So that was really, really fun. And then I also spent time living on the French side in the gated community. And I got to, there's a really nice private beach where actually Donald Trump, the former president of the United States, has one of his homes, which he was never there. So a lot of people would just like sit out on his, like in front of his property and use the beach. And so the French side was really nice, although it was a lot more quiet. So if you're looking for more action, the Dutch side would probably be more something that you are, would be looking for. And what was interesting about spending time there, because I spent a lot of time there during COVID-19, is that St. Martin was really open. And so you only had to wear a mask at the grocery store and or at the pharmacy. So if you wanted to go to a restaurant, you didn't have to wear a mask. No one was wearing a mask. So if you were someone that really wanted to experience more of a normal life and not have to wear a mask at a lot of places, St. Martin, particularly on the Dutch side, was very open and free and a lot of people were going out and having a good time. So if ever something were to occur like this again, perhaps you would like to put St. Martin and or Sweden on your list of things to do. But all in all, like St. Martin and St. Barts are really great islands. I've met people from New York that just absolutely love both the islands um, and that at every moment they can, they try to get down and they, you know, they're purchasing a property and they want to spend more time and they want to retire in the Caribbean. So these are islands that I would recommend visiting and yeah, all the best. Bye for now. Bye.